the Pegasus Welfare Solutions Group has delivered a quote unquote welfare solution to the Aberdeen offshore wind farm. And you're saying, what you, what is a welfare solution? Well, it's it's a toilet that goes on offshore wind turbines because it is a problem, uh, obvious problem. It's like what happens when uh, they. The agreement with the Aberdeen Wind Farm is a, has a three-year service agreement uh, with the operator, which is Vattenfall, right? So the, the Swedes have connected with Pegasus to provide this solution. And this Pegasus Welfare Solution is a patented in-tower turbine toilet for all 11 turbines at this farm. So this has got to be a pretty complicated thing if you're patenting a toilet. Uh, the contract covers training, consumable supplies, and servicing of the unit. Right, so that, as Phil mentioned earlier today, what does training involve with these toilets? I, I, I'm not sure. Do they come with a manual? Are they that complicated? But what do you do with it? You know, like you then you've got to take it down again with you, or you know, is it like it being um, cartridges exchanged by drone or? Or what? I assume that that's what the training is about. <laughs> yeah, but the the reality of the situation is is there's there's no toilet out there. So when some when you go to work on a wind turbine, if you're in a, a CTV, a, you know, a crew transfer vessel or an SOV, you have a walk to work, or you have the vessel come up next to the transition piece. You get off, you get on, the boat goes away. The boat does not hang out there. Now the boat has a restroom on it, and that transition now it's dangerous for one, making that transition to the the transition piece of the wind turbine from the vessel. So that's dangerous. So you want to limit those kind of transfers as much as you can. But it also burns a lot of fuel to be on DP, if you're on dynamic positioning, if you're in an SOV. And it also takes a lot of time. It takes time to come back in, come back out if someone's like, I have to go to a potty break. So putting these toilets in offshore wind turbines, it's probably a really good OPEX move for the money spent in service. I laughed so hard when I saw this. I said, um, yeah, this eliminates the need to return to a vessel to use restroom facilities. And I've never worked offshore, but I have worked onshore plenty of times. And no one is climbing down the tower to go <laughs> to go find a toilet or even find a nice, you know, isolated tree. You know, the, the men are, are going up there and the women are, are holding it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's how it works in, in reality. So, you know, I think it's actually a really, really good, um, you know, gender equality thing if they're going to have toilets up there, because it, I can tell you this is something that you're <laughs> you're thinking about every day that you go out on site. You're like, well, I shouldn't get dehydrated. But on the other hand, there's a lot of benefits to being dehydrated <laughs> all day. If you're yeah, got to climb up a turbine, you might be there for 12 hours, you know, like it's it's something that you're <laughs> that you're thinking about, I can assure you. So what is happening in Aberdeen, right? Aberdeen's on the North Sea, right, Joel? Right? The North Sea is like one of the most turbulent places on the planet, right? So what are, what are they doing? Are they going on top of the turbines? And then that just sounds, ex one, it sounds extremely dangerous, and two, messy. Water bottles. Water bottles, man. Water bottles. Yeah, and then in onshore as well, it's like, you know, you know not to park the car in certain um, areas underneath the turbine because you, you might, you know, get get a little... A little precipitation on, on your roof, depending on on the, the projectile dynamics. You know what? This is going to be one of the weirdest episodes we have ever done. But Sparks, you know, this is um number one number one question that I get asked by teenage girls when I you know talk in high schools about um you know working with with in the wind industry. It gets us every single time and always by uh, a woman. So yeah, I, I think that maybe you know it's not such a big deal for for men and especially in an all male crew. But if it's uh you know mixed mixed gender crew or you know usually just one one woman up with a bunch of guys, it's super awkward. Yeah. So I I, I do this is really interesting though because I don't I do not know what's happening off the coast of the United States right now. You would have to think what Vineyard Wind's going in right now. There's a couple others that are going to happen. I don't think there's any provisions for that at all, weirdly enough, in my state of Massachusetts, where that would be a top priority. I don't think they have anything like that. No. this is, Well, because this company also has other, uh, a few other contracts in the UK, and I think maybe one in France uh, or Germany, I want to say. Um, but this is not a common accommodation that's actually made. Uh, so, Alan, you asked before if this is like in the budget. I'd say most of the time, not necessarily. So kudos to Vattenfall for actually being proactive. Um, and again, whether it was a gender equality thing or just, you know, a, a personal comfort thing, 
Um, it's it's certainly helping the people who are out there, you know, like Rosemary said, for potentially twelve hours a day, or even sleeping aboard the you know on on the foundation potentially. Uh, you know, if if you have to be there for service, you know, for a couple of days or something, you know, hopefully not. But I mean, there are um, you know turbines that also have that type of of personal accommodation and again not all of them have necessarily taken into account this this uh, type of personal wellness and hygiene are there sleeping quarters in some of these offshore turbines I, I guess that would make sense to me like put a small fridge in there yeah it's not no not like that it's basically just a cot if you've seen the movie tenet um there's a scene at the towards the beginning of the movie i actually just watched it um i didn't quite get it so i'm gonna have to watch it again but there's a scene at the beginning where you can see kind of the the little setup at, uh, I think it was one of the wind farms in Sweden or Norway, I want to say. I don't remember which. I haven't seen that before. I, I guess it would be a thing. The further you get offshore, the more you'd think that you'd put like a fridge and some snacks and a cot somewhere just in case. To be blunt, I mean, most of the time now, even though Joel mentioned before how these these... Uh, CTVs don't necessarily loiter um, after they've done the crew transfer. The they're designing vessels now, more of the SOV vessels and and things that are maybe a little bit intermediate to larger that can serve as kind of motherships, and they might have multiple CTVs that are kind of associated with the mothership. Um, so they might actually transfer crew back to these. They call them floatels. Um, I, I want to say uh, Sea Wind uh, is one company I know that that does these these kind of vessels where you know if they have crew that are going to be out you know at a project site offshore for you know extended duration let's say there's a, a you know fleet repair of cables or there might be something with a series of blades that they have to do um, they might actually have that accommodation. It's rare to have like an actual personal accommodation on the turbine. But again, there must be a specific reason why Vattenfall wanted this solution for for this project. Joel, I see a coffee table book in our future. Toilets of wind turbines. <laughs> it's just got this one page in it. <laughs> Alan, the anti-wind turbine people are going to just take that and twist it, and that's not going to end well for anybody. Yeah, one page is this toilet, and then the other next page is just, yeah, uh, a yellow bottle of like mineral water or something. Thank you.